Hi everyone, welcome back to Elmer's Restoration, video 36. Continuing with the subframe, so I'm going to get the radius arm back on, all the bits and pieces hooked up. See how far we can get in this video, but I want to finish this subframe now and move on to something else so that I can get both subframes finished and move on to the shell and um, do something different. Because I want to get the rotisserie jig built up and I want to get it on the rotisserie and yeah, all that good stuff. So, and I'll, I'll do, I plan to cover all that. I'll do an episode or episodes depending on how long it takes to get the rotisserie jig up and the car on it. So, from where we left off last time. Right, the radius arm is nearly ready to go back in. What I've done is I have dug up my little bag. It tells me all the bits and pieces that came off it to start with. And I've also... As I said in previous videos, ordered the new dust covers. And also in previous videos, you have seen this being refurbed just as I want it. So, the first thing to go on this washer with the indent on the inside to trap the grease. This can be very fiddly putting on, just because it's new it needs stretched over it slightly. And when you find when you do stretch it over it tends to knock the washer out the way, but there we go. This bracket can then be fed. And if you remember what was on there before, it was your spring washer. And your bolt. I'll hand tight that just now, I'll tighten it once it's on the subframe, it gives it a little bit of leeway to adjust these bits to where the subframe is. <clears throat> Washer on the other side, same as before. And the dust cover, same as before. Once you've got all the way over, I'll hold the washer in place, it should. Right, just a case of getting this offered back up to the subframe and getting it back on. So um, let's go across to the subframe. Right, so I've supported the arm in place with a bungee cord because <clears throat> otherwise it would be flapping all over the place. I've managed to get the inner bolt through the hole in the subframe. And it's just a case now of going through all these bolts, putting some copper piece on them and put it together the same as you see me taking it apart so fix up tunes and off we go
handbrake quadrants. So the handbrake quadrants, these are what come off. You've seen them in a previous video. Had to go. This, although it held it on, isn't the correct fitting for it. As a few uh, the guys pointed out in the video when I took it down. So me being me, I want to put it back to what it should be, not what was bodged or what came with this subframe. You seen me get these? What are these? They were a bit scraped, so I had to give them a coat of paint and the correct pin that comes with them is this one basically the inside here will be smoother against the inside of the subframe and it's a split pin at the bottom with a washer but as I found when I was trying this it doesn't fit so I think this is an issue with an aftermarket part so all I'm going to have to do is just drill this hole out slightly bigger so I decided against the drill and I uh, used one of these a bit easier to handle and a bit friendlier on the metal so now you can see perfect fit so like I said just this bit here I'm just going to cover in grease to stop it catch it and make it easier to hold in the subframe. This is just normal grease, it could be copper grease, it could be any kind of grease, it's not getting hot back here so... Through the quadrant, making a mess. So, when the handbrake cable goes in it attaches to the mechanism here through the bracket here and it comes around the subframe and through that hole at the back there and this is where the quadrant sits and it sits in here like this that'll push through this sits here so that the cable can go around here quite smoothly and it gives it a bit of flex to move the um, The washers goes on next underneath. So the washer goes on here and then the split pin goes through the hole here and bends back locking it in place. I can't do that with um, one hand of the camera so I'll come back to you. So there you go, there's the washer and split pin installed. And there's the bracket in place. It kind of hides in in the black. I think uh, maybe silver or I did consider red just to highlight it but no I don't want it looking ridiculous so I think a uh, nice subtle black will do it when I put the handbrake cable on I'll put some grease in here just to help it, <coughs> it move but we'll cover that at the time but that's just another little thing the handbrake quadrants installed and it's just the little details that make the difference for example that pin Right, so I'm going to go over torque settings, or the best I could find for torque settings, not most of it was clear and some of the bolts on the rear subframe didn't actually have torque settings, so maybe you guys could um, chip in if you know otherwise. I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. So, this bolt I'm going to do up um, when it's ready to go back in the car. That one there is coming in at 81 Newton meters or 60 foot pounds we come to the bolts here um, where are we? and the other trunnion they don't have torque settings as you can see the thread ends here so they go as tight as they can to the end of that and then there's obviously a split washer to lock the nut in place so there's no torque settings for them these ones <coughs> I couldn't find torque settings for although I did find a guide online that if there wasn't any torque settings the um, estimated torque for a half mil bolt was 90 newton meters and it was 75 newton meters for a 7 16th bolt so again if any of you guys out there have got any further knowledge on that pass it on it would be most appreciated it's also I've not done it yet but the bolts that go onto the rear heel, heel board as well 
again couldn't find torque settings for that so unless anyone can tell me otherwise I'll apply the same um, rough torque settings as these here. From one of the previous videos I was putting out by a couple of the guys, this um, washer here, the C-clip, actually I've put that in backwards, that should be flipped around the other way. The reason being that when it's pushed in the other way, it gives more tension against the the wheel cylinder. So again, once um, I get a bit more pieces done, I can disassemble this a bit, get that taken out and flipped the other way. I'm trying to show you guys as much as I'm picking up here, and I'm also trying to do a lot of research to find out what the common mistakes are and what um, I can so when you guys put comments on it's really appreciated because I'm learning as well you know I've, it's the first time I've really started building one of these subframes back up and half the fun's learning to be honest how it all works once you've done one hopefully you should learn for the next two three how to do it but I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying every second of this Right, so, off camera, I have been building up the other side. So it's pretty much the same as the other side, except I've obviously got this brake quadrant to go in that I've just done. Brakes are all done. Paint's all been sanded back, painted, wax oiled, and yep, it's all looking good. There's a few bits and pieces where it's been scuffed or caught on something that I'm going to touch up once everything's on. This stuff hardly dries, you know, that's the whole point. It, it's got the oil through it. So um, what I will do for the next video is I'll just do this entire what I've done in a complete time lapse. And then that whole video will catch us up to where we are right now. So going forward, we're not far away. There's... Um, few bits and pieces to do, I have to build up the brake cables, the brakes, as you can see I've taken all the brake lines out, I want to check all the brake lines, I want to check that they're right fittings, they're not metric unions instead of UNF unions, you know, I'm, I don't trust it enough to assume it's right, so I'm going to check all that. So hopefully there will be one more video left on this subframe, and it'll basically be reassembling all the brakes, brake cables, brake lines, handbrake cable, I'll have the um, exhaust hangers to put on, it should be fairly straightforward, and then that just leaves the high lows basically to go in here. So I was going to leave this to last but I'm going to trial fit it just now because it's been one of those things I just want to try. So. I'm going to stand you guys on the stand and let me know what you think of these. They came silver but as I've mentioned before they were never staying silver. So look, I love this colour. Flame red, favourite colour. Same as the front calipers. As I dropped them. How do they look? Fantastic. Something about that colour, I don't know what it is. Still needs um, another coat, but this one's still not fully dried yet. So there's kind of a taster, what's to, what's to come? So we'll leave that video there and I'll get into the time lapse of the next one for you. I'm really enjoying getting back into Elnor again and um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. So, as always, take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!